Just because they're small, that doesn't mean they're not a threat. Bugs can be serious business. They can be truly lethal. These are the 20 most dangerous insects alive today. Number 20. Ticks. Ticks are parasitic arachnids that belong to the parasitiforms order of mites. Adult ticks range in length from 3 to 5 millimeters depending on their age, sex, species, and fullness. Yeah, full of your blood, that is. Ticks are parasitic insects that feed on the blood of mammals, birds, and sometimes reptiles and amphibians. Ticks are thought to have originated roughly 100 million years ago, while the earliest known tick fossils date from the Cretaceous era. Ticks are found all across the globe, particularly in hot, humid conditions. Ticks are carriers of many deadly illnesses that harm people and other animals because of their hematophagous, blood-eating habits. Ticks are thought to be involved in the transmission of a variety of illnesses caused by bacteria, viruses, and protozoa. When a tick carries more than one kind of pathogen, identification of the illness becomes more complicated. Typhus, rickettsia fever, Boutonnose fever, African tick bite fever, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Flinders Island spotted fever, and Queensland tick typhus are all caused by rickettsia species. Lyme disease and Q fever are two more tick-borne infections. Lyme disease is the most often reported vector-borne illness in the United States. Some species even have the ability to deposit eggs within your body. This bug will lay eggs inside your body, so you better better watch out. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. This bug will lay eggs inside your body, and that sends chills down our spines and makes us want to throw up. Yuck. This spider bit a man, but he didn't develop powers and become a socially awkward superhero. Instead, it burrowed into his skin and lived there for three days. While in there, it laid eggs. It is utterly horrifying that something like this can happen. Thankfully, expert dermatologists were able to help out, but still, it makes me feel sick just thinking about it. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below by using the hashtag JuicyTopic. Number 19. Arizona Bark Scorpions the Arizona bark scorpion is a little light brown scorpion that may be found in the Sonoran Desert in southwestern Arizona and northwest Mexico. An adult male can reach a maximum length of 8 centimeters, whereas a female can only reach a maximum length of 7 centimeters. The Arizona bark scorpion is nocturnal and well adapted to the desert, with wax coatings on its exoskeleton preventing water loss. Despite this, Arizona bark scorpions seek shelter from the sun behind boulders, wood piles, or tree bark throughout the day. Arizona bark scorpions do not burrow and are regularly seen in houses, needing just a 1 16th inch opening to get inside your home. The venom of the Arizona bark scorpion is the most deadly in North America, and it may inflict extreme pain, along with numbness, tingling, and vomiting in adult humans for up to 72 hours. Temporary malfunction in the stung region is frequent. For example, a hand or an arm may become immobile or undergo spasms. For a brief period of time, it may also induce shortness of breath. After envenomation, many patients report feeling electrical jolts as a result of the excruciating agony. Since 1968, there have been two reported deaths in Arizona. The number of victims stung each year in Arizona and New Mexico is believed to be in the thousands. More than 100,000 people are stung each year in Mexico, while the Arizona bark scorpion claimed up to 800 deaths during a peak period in the 1980s. Number 18. The Sydney Funnelweb Spider this time, it's a well-known menace to civilization that every Australian is acquainted with, the funnel web spider, which appears often in Australian headlines. 
This spider, in addition to being enormous and heavy, may grow up to two inches in length and has fangs that point downward rather than horizontally, making it a particularly severe biting menace. And these are some powerful, sharp teeth capable of easily chewing through a pair of shoes or a human fingernail. In addition, the funnel web bites the victim and injects a large dose of venom into their system. Funnel webs are burrowing spiders that love to terrify unwary people who wander outdoors and stick their hands into any chilly, dark, and wet spots they discover. Their burrows are usually identifiable by a sort of uneven silk funnel that serves as a tripwire for the animals. The spider springs to her feet as soon as she feels a vibration, ready to sink her teeth into whomever happens to be strolling by. Number 17. The Bullet Ant these ants are huge, measuring roughly one inch in length, and they are no match for their leaf-loving relatives when it comes to lifting ability. The bullet ant's name doesn't refer to a nice and gentle creature, rather it refers to an ant with one critically overpowering ability, its sting. The bullet ant is the champion of the Schmidt Pain Index, which quantifies the agony caused by different insect stings. The bullet ant is the only bug that receives a maximum score of four on the pain index. Schmidt describes the sensation of being stung by a bullet ant as pure, intense, brilliant pain, like walking over flaming charcoal with a three-inch nail embedded in your heel. Others just describe it as though they are being shot, thus the term Bullet ant. The discomfort is unlikely to go away for at least 24 hours, and it might induce severe shaking, edema, and a fast pulse. Surprisingly, one Amazon tribe has an initiation process in which young boys are required to put on gloves containing 80 of these tiny monsters and keep them on for five minutes as evidence of their masculinity. So kudos to the Satare Mawe people. That is one tough initiation ceremony. Number 16. Southern Flannel Moths the Megalopygidae family of moths includes the southern flannel moth, often known as the puss moth. The inch-long larva has long, luxuriant hair-like setae that give it the appearance of a small Persian cat, which may explain why it was given the name puss. It comes in a variety of colors, ranging from a downy grayish white to a golden brown to a dark charcoal gray. A vivid orange streak runs lengthwise on it very often. The fur of early stage larvae may be coiled, giving them a cottony puffy look. The middle instar lacks the distinctive tail and has an untidy bad hair day appearance. Poisonous spikes in the larva's fur inflict severe discomfort when they come into contact with human flesh. The mature moth has long fur in shades ranging from dull orange to lemon yellow, as well as hairy legs and fuzzy black feet. The caterpillar is considered a dangerous insect because of its stinging spines. The caterpillar's fur-like spines create a grid-like hemorrhagic papular eruption with acute radiating pain. When they come into contact with the skin, victims report the pain as being similar to that of a broken bone or blunt force trauma or even white hot. Burning, swelling, nausea, headache, gastrointestinal distress, rashes, blisters, and infrequently chest discomforts, numb or difficulty breathing are some of the common symptoms. This pussycat is not one to be stroked. Number 15. Kissing Bugs Kissing bugs belong to the Triatomine family and earn their name from the fact that they like to feed near people's lips. Gross. The bulk of the 130 or so species in this subfamily feed on vertebrate blood, with just a few feeding on invertebrates. There are a few species in Asia, Africa, and Australia, but they are predominantly found in the Americas. These bugs often dwell in colonies, with nesting vertebrates draining their blood. In areas where the parasite is present, which stretch from the southern United States to northern Argentina, all triatomine species are potential Chagas disease vectors. Charles Darwin presented one of the first reports of the existence of triatomines in America at the turn of the 19th century in his Journal and Remarks, published in 1839, and generally known as the Voyage of the Beagle. There has been a lot of debate in the medical community 
community over whether Darwin's brush with triatomines in Argentina was connected to his future periods of long-term illness, but it's unlikely that it was, since he didn't mention the fever that usually follows the first infection. But make no mistake, Chagas disease is a terrible illness that you should avoid at all costs. Therefore, avoid kissing bugs like the plague. Number 14. Black Widow Spiders Latrodectus mactens, sometimes known as the Southern Black Widow, or simply Black Widow, is a venomous spider belonging to the genus Latrodectus. Females are distinguished by their remarkable black and red coloration, as well as the fact that they sometimes consume their spouse after breeding. That's a little wacky. Only North America is home to this species. Healthy people, on the other hand, are seldom killed by the venom. The Black Widow was first described in 1775 by Johann Christian Fabricius, despite the fact that native people were already terrified of it. The Southern Widow is a native of the southeastern United States, although it may also be found as far north as Ohio and as far west as Texas. The Northern Black Widow is usually found in the northeastern United States and southeastern Canada, while its range overlaps with that of its southern relative. Black Widow spiders eat a variety of insects, with a preference for fire ants when they're around. More on those guys later, but let's say they seem to like spicy dishes. Only mature females, not the much smaller males, are capable of envenomation in humans, unlike the much smaller males. Their chelicera, the hollow needle-like mouth parts that inject venom, are long enough to inject venom into people at roughly one millimeter. Even in full-grown females, the quantity injected fluctuates, and it is not as deadly as their frightening reputation indicates. Number 13. Asian Giant Hornets the Asian giant hornet is the world's biggest hornet, measuring up to 2 inches in length, 3 inches in wingspan, with a gigantic quarter-inch stinger that carries the lethal venom of this flying insect. This hornet is a super predator that feeds on insects including bees, mantises, and other hornets. They specialize on attacking bee nests, and their standard strategy is to send out a few scout hornets to survey the area before releasing pheromones to alert the rest of the hornet swarm that everything seems to be in order and that they should come over for a massacre. When they come into contact with western honeybee nests, a species that does not ordinarily come into contact with Asian giant hornets, but does so more often as a consequence of human introductions, the effects may be devastating, since hornets can kill up to 40 bees per minute. These hornets are well known in Japan, where they are responsible for the deaths of 12 to 13 individuals each year, the majority of whom are allergic to their stings. Even if you aren't allergic, if a hornet attempts to sting you, the sting is quite unpleasant. Many more people are projected to come into contact with them as they travel throughout the United States. After arriving in 2019, and as in Japan, they may just become part of the cuisine and considered a delicacy when fried. Number 12. Fire Ants what is there to know about the fire ant other than the fact that they are black widow food? More than 200 species of ants belong to the Solenopsis genus, the majority of which are known as fire ants. The common names for Solenopsis ants, such as ginger ants or tropical fire ants, indicate that they are stinging ants. Urticaria, which is followed by a local burning sensation, is caused by fire ant stings. The sting site becomes a lump within hours, which may cause further pain and suffering, particularly if many stings occur at the same time. The lump may evolve into a white pustule within 24 to 36 hours, which may get infectious if scratched, but if left alone it will flatten spontaneously in a few days. The pustules are visible and unpleasant when active, and if infected, they may cause scarring. Fire ant stings are treated with topical and oral drugs as first aid. There are also a number of remedies with varying degrees of efficacy, such as employing a half-bleach, half-water solution, or aloe vera gel, 
the latter of which is usually included in over-the-counter lotions that also contain medically tested and certified treatments. Severe allergic reactions to fire ant stings, which include severe chest pain, nausea, extreme sweating, shortness of breath, substantial swelling, and impaired speech, may lend to death if not treated. Number 11. The CC Fly CC flies are obligate parasitic insects that feed on vertebrate blood. CC have been extensively studied because of their relevance in disease transmission. They have a substantial economic effect on sub-Saharan Africa, as biological vectors of trypanosomes, which cause human sleeping sickness and animal trypanosomiasis. CC are multivoltine and long-lived producing four broods on average each year and up to 31 broods in their lifetime. CC are multivoltine and long-lived, producing four broods on average each year and up to 31 broods in their lifetime. CC fossils have been found in the fluorescent fossil beds of Colorado, which date back 34 million years. CC flies are found in 23 distinct species throughout Africa and Arabia, according to a new scientist article. Disease caused by a combination of rinderpest and the CC fly resulted in the depopulated and untamed Africa seen in nature documentaries. Rinderpest, a Central Asian cow disease, wiped off almost all of the cattle of pastoral peoples, such as the Maasai in East Africa. The bulk of the bovine population in South Africa, roughly 5.5 million domestic cattle, died since there was no local immunity. Pastoralists and farmers were left without their major source of income, livestock, and farmers plowing and irrigation animals were taken away. Number 10. Harvester Ants the ant species Euprenolopus procera is classified as a harvester ant because it harvests seeds or mushrooms and stores them in communal chambers inside the nest known as granaries. There are, however, numerous additional types of harvester ant. Some desert ants gather seeds to supplement typical ant resources, such as prey or honeydew from hemipterans, which are in low supply. Harvester ants help in the dispersal and storage of seeds, as well as the supply of nutrients that help desert plant seedlings survive. Furthermore, ants aerate the soil by forming galleries and chambers, mixing the deep and upper layers of soil, and integrating organic waste, all of which are beneficial to the ecosystem. Despite their diminutive size, harvester ants have a potent venom that may inflict catastrophic harm. They inject it into their victim via sting by biting down and quickly stinging them from their abdomen. This causes four to eight hours of sharp pain with effects similar to neurotoxicity, such as pylorection and localized swelling around the sting. They then bite down and quickly sting them from their abdomen, so although they may seem to be friendly farmers, be wary of these weaponized ants. Number 9. Saddleback Caterpillars the saddleback caterpillar is a larval stage of a moth species native to eastern North America. Another area where it may be found is in Mexico. The bulk of this caterpillar is green, with brown on both ends and a huge saddle-shaped white-ringed brown dot in the middle. A pair of fleshy horns may be seen on each end. These parts, as well as the bulk of the rest of the body, are covered with urticating hairs that exude an unpleasant venom. Contact with the hairs causes a painful, swollen rash as well as nausea in people. Acute urticaria, a systemic condition marked by headaches, gastrointestinal symptoms, breathing problems, anaphylactic shock, erythrocyte rupturing, and bleeding, may arise in rare situations in reaction to the venom. The hair should be removed from the skin as quickly as possible to prevent future venom transmission. Hairs from the larva may fall on adjacent objects, and these hairs may even find their way inside the cocoon. They favor warmer climates, such as Yucatan, Mexico, but can also cope with the somewhat milder climates of the eastern United States. 
The saddleback caterpillar is known for having one of the most powerful stings, and since it is most often found in ornamental plants, gardeners are the ones who are most at risk of coming into touch with it by accident. Number 8. Wolf Spiders Wolf spiders are strong, fast predators. With exceptional vision, they spend most of their time alone, hunt alone, and do not weave webs. Some are opportunistic predators, pounce on prey as they come across it, or chase it over short distances, while others wait for passing prey in or near a burrow's entrance. If disturbed repeatedly, wolf spiders will inject venom. Swelling, slight discomfort, and itching are all symptoms of their bites. Necrotic bites were formerly assigned to various South American species, but additional examination revealed that the issues that did occur were most likely caused by bites from other genera. Because to the efforts of Skylar B. Hutto, a third grade student at Sheridan Elementary School in Orangeburg, South Carolina chose the Carolina wolf spider as the official state spider in 2002, South Carolina was the only state in the United States to designate a state spider at this time. Number 7. Lice the human headlouse is an obligate ectoparasite. Headlice are wingless insects that live their whole lives on the human scalp and only eat human blood. Humans are the only known host of this parasite, but chimps carry Pediculus shafi, a closely related species. Most mammalian orders and all avian orders are infested by other types of lice. Lice, unlike other hematophagic ectoparasites like fleas, spend their whole life cycle on a single host. Head lice are unable to fly, and their small, stumpy legs prevent them from jumping or even walking on flat surfaces. Head lice have been, and continue to be, the focus of several eradication initiatives, particularly among children. Head lice, unlike body lice, do not transmit any known illnesses, however scratching at bites may cause uncommon secondary infections. Infestations of head louse may be advantageous in fostering a natural immune response to lice, which aids people in their defense against the considerably more hazardous body louse, which may spread illnesses. Head louse infestation was shown to be influenced by the number of children per household, sharing of beds and closets, hair washing practices, local traditions, and social connections, health care in a specific location, example school, and socioeconomic position. Girls are two to four times as likely than boys to be contaminated. The most common infected age group is children between the ages of four and 14. Number six. Baboon Spiders The baboon spider is a tarantula-like spider species. These spiders are only found on the African continent. They live in a range of environments, including dry acacia, shrubland, grassland, and savanna forest. Their burrows are generally deep in desert locations to protect them from high temperatures. Large venomous teeth may inflict a severe bite from these hazardous spiders. Their venom contains a neurotoxin that causes severe pain at the bite location, vomiting, indications of shock, and difficulties walking in humans. When they are startled, they will thrust their front legs backwards, revealing their fangs, and some may hiss. These critters are enormous, ranging in size from from 13 to 90 millimeters. They come in a variety of colors, including brown, gray, yellow, and black, but all have hairy bodies. They spend most of their time on the ground, burrowing under rocks in silk-lined tunnels. The silk usually creates a rim around the entrance. During the day, they hide in their burrows, and the openings are typically silk covered with a thin, translucent cover. The baboon spider is a predator that hunts at night. Crickets, cockroaches, moths, butterflies, and even other spiders are among the creatures that they feed on. Small creatures, such as lizards, frogs, mice, and snakes, have been known to be attacked. Number 5. Pelvin Ants Red velvet ants, often known as cow killer ants, are solitary ants that do not build nests. Therefore, traditional methods of ant control will be ineffective in this circumstance. 
Because velvet ants are notorious for their very painful sting, it is best not to agitate them. These ants do not swarm places in the same way that other ants do, since they are wasps, not ants. Velvet ants live in small colonies and prey on a variety of bees and wasps. They may pose a threat to people and cattle. Therefore, you should eliminate them as soon as possible. Because they seldom infiltrate in large quantities, the approach for removing them differs from that of other ants. Velvet ants aren't very damaging to your home or the environment, but their sting is incredibly unpleasant. Their venom is not harmful, at least not to humans, but the agony it causes is excruciating. Only female red velvet ants have this very painful stinger, which also has certain poisonous consequences, but male velvet ants do not. It was classified as the third most painful sting on the sting index, and several people likened it to an electric shock. The sting of a velvet ant usually produces severe discomfort for around 30 minutes. Number 4. Indian Red Scorpions the Indian Red Scorpion, sometimes known as the Eastern Indian Scorpion, is the world's most venomous scorpion. The scorpion isn't always red despite its popular name. It might be reddish-brown to orange or brown in hue. Although the Indian Red Scorpion does not hunt humans, it will sting in order to protect itself. Because of their small size, children are the most vulnerable to stings. Indian red scorpions are kept as pets despite their lethal venom. In addition, they are raised and maintained in captivity for medical study. Potassium channel-blocking peptids are found in scorpion venom, might be used as immunosuppressants for autoimmune diseases. Example, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis. Some toxins might be used in dermatology, cancer therapy, and anti-malarial medications. Stings from Indian red scorpions are prevalent in India and Nepal. The scorpions are not hostile, but if they are trodden on or otherwise threatened, they will sting. Clinical mortality rates have been reported to vary from 8% to 40%. The most prevalent victims are children, severe pain at the sting site, vomiting, sweating, dyspnea, and alternating high and low blood pressure, and heart rate are all symptoms of envenomation. The venom attacks the lungs and circulatory system, and pulmonary edema may lead to death. While antivenom has little efficacy, the blood pressure medicine, prazosin, has been shown to cut mortality to less than 4%. The venom and antivenom cause severe allergic responses in certain people, including anaphylaxis. Number 3. The German Yellow Jacket The German Yellow Jacket is a void nesting species that may be found over most of the northeastern United States into Canada and all the way down the Pacific coast to California. It may be found in Chile, Argentina, New Zealand, and Australia, in addition to its native Europe. Although it is generally a ground nesting species in Europe, Australia, and New Zealand, it is more often found in cavities inside structures in North America. It's highly widespread in cities and suburbs, but it's also seen in rural structures. Vespula germanica, an invasive non-native species, can defend its nest vigorously and may sting many times. The stings are unpleasant and may constitute a major health danger to anyone who are sensitive or allergic to them. German yellow jackets are known for being very protective of their nests and may drive away other animals, sometimes for great distances. These colonies may number in the thousands late in the summer or early in the autumn, and their proximity to humans makes them a possible threat. Number 2. Brown Recluse Spiders The brown recluse spider's venom is a necrotic venom. Their bites, like those of other recluse spiders, need medical attention on occasion. Necrosis is a kind of cell injury that results in autolysis, causing living tissue cells to die prematurely. Brown recluse spiders normally grow to be 6 to 22 millimeters long, but they may grow to be much larger. They are usually light to medium brown in hue, although they may also be pale, dark brown, or blackish gray in appearance. The cephalothorax and abdomen aren't usually the same hue, 
Fiddleback spiders, brown fiddlers, and violin spiders are all names for spiders, with violin-like markings on the dorsal side of their cephalothorax, with the violin's neck pointing to the spider's back. The violin pattern isn't a surefire technique to identify spiders, since other spiders may have similar patterns. Recluse spiders have six pairs of eyes, one central pair and two lateral pairs, rather than the eight eyes seen in other spiders. Only a few spiders have this combination of three pairs of eyes, recluses have no color patterns on their abdomens or legs, and their legs lack spines. The brown recluse spider's violin marking fluctuates in intensity depending on its age, with mature spiders having black violin shapes. Number 1. Bed Bugs Bed bugs are blood-feeding insects of the genus Cymex and are most active at night. Skin rashes, psychological consequences, and allergy reactions are all possible side effects of their bites. Bites from bed bugs may cause skin changes ranging from minor redness to large blisters. Typically only exposed bodily parts are affected, they are not known to spread any infectious diseases via their bites. Bed insect extermination is challenging, in part because bed bugs may live for up to 70 days without eating. It's possible that a resident may need to be treated many times. Heating the room to 50 degrees Celsius for 90 minutes, regular cleaning, washing items at high temperatures, and the application of different pesticides are all possible therapies. Bed bugs were quite frequent prior to the mid-20th century. According to a study published by the UK Ministry of Health in 1933, bed bugs infested every dwelling in certain places. The introduction of electric heating, which enabled bed bugs to flourish year-round instead of only in the summer, is credited with the rise in bed bug populations in the early 20th century. During World War II, bed bugs were a major issue on US military sites. The issue was first treated by fumigation, which included the use of cyclone discoids that produced hydrogen cyanide gas, which was a pretty risky technique. DDT was later employed to considerable success, however bed bugs have developed a resistance to it. Potent insecticides that had not previously been widely accessible are typically linked for the fall of bed bug populations in the 20th century. Increased public awareness and slum clearance initiatives that coupled pesticide usage with steam disinfection, relocating slum people to new dwellings, and in certain instances, follow-up inspections are other significant aspects that are less usually noted in news accounts. Are you afraid of bugs? What's the scariest bug you've ever seen? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.